are now locked into Radio Juxtapose, the home of contemporary art and culture conversation. Coming up today. So it's weird how like work can change as the world changes around it. But like that kind of uncanny strangeness is what I'm always looking for and like trying to find ways to find that. This is Radio Juxtapose. Every week that goes by, it feels increasingly like we're all living in some weird movie. I'm still trying to figure out who the director is. If this is your first time walking into us at Radio Juxtapose, then welcome. If this isn't your first time walking in and you're a regular listener, then also welcome. Very shortly, we're going to get into the main event of this podcast, which is the interview myself and Evan had with the artist Austin Lee back at the Armory Show in New York. His work is incredibly colourful and visually arresting. We're going to get into the mechanics of how he crafts this visual language. Before we get into the interview, here's a brief catch-up me and Evan had from week two of self-isolation. If you're enjoying what we're doing with Radio Juxtapose, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. And why not reach out to us? Let us know who you'd like to hear on a future episode. So, let me see if I can just make this great again. Yeah. <laughs> don't. 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 <laughs> don't. There's only one way to start this off, and that's just by saying, you guys win. All right? I thought there's nobody on the planet that can mess this up more than Boris Johnson, and then, boom, Trump showed why he's the number one. Yeah, well, Boris getting coronavirus might uh, actually <laughs> help and hey, or look, hurt. A, I'm he, not sure. He's a, he's a close second. But the thing is, we at least have governors in America that run states that are trying to do their best and not listening. What are you having there? Uh, it's, I'm drinking a lot more at the moment. <laughs> I've actually surprisingly not been drinking a lot at home because I'm worried about drinking at home. <laughs> but you're uh, Scottish, so that's a way different. It's how we handle our depression. Uh, <laughs> week two. <laughs> oh, God, I've got a dry cough. <laughs> Whoa, no, no. This this podcast has started off really, really hot. Yes, our, our country is being run just spontaneous combustion at all times. <laughs> The guy's mad. <laughs> He's <Yeah>. gone mad. <laughs> yeah. He's just... Like, it was cute for a bit. I was like, oh. And now I'm like, this might kill everyone. Well, I think I think the issue is, is that he thinks the virus happened to him and him only, which happens to be a big issue when you have 320 plus million people that you uh, are uh, overlord to in his mind. <laughs> Wait, I think that this interview actually fits into the same theme as your Felipe interview uh, in the sense that uh, technology is being embraced no matter how analog or um, early adopter Austin was to certain things. It's I like the fact that we've now talked to two artists kind of in di- way different realms of the of the contemporary art world that uh, are like totally fine with saying they love technology. And I definitely think that's one of the things that's going to come out of the next couple of months. I think artists that maybe weren't necessarily embracing technology, I think they're going to be definitely exploring that. What Austin is doing is it's kind of different. I don't know if there's too many other people out there trying to get blemishes and imperfections from machinery the same way that he's doing you know kind of almost counterintuitive to what you would expect from a digital artist so to speak or i don't even know if he's a digital artist he's using he's using digital tools but he doesn't he's not a digital artist yeah he's trying to replicate digital imagery in an analog way and the way he explains it if you if you've seen his work before and you're not necessarily sure what's going on like he is very clear that it is very difficult to get the strokes and get the effect that he's going for because he's trying to replicate some of the simplest digital uh, applications that there, that, that there ever has been. Um, so it's really great hearing. He has a, some, you know, like one liners in this where he's like, yeah, man. Yeah, that's so good. You know, and I, I think that's was it was really cool to hear him talk about actually how hard it is to get these um these images to come to be created to come to life i have like a lot of friends that will be basically like always um kind of like ping pong ideas or like thoughts back and forth from each other and that's for me like one of the most 
important things like basically because for me like art is make about making or it's about like kind of sharing and communicating with different people and like and like that aspect I think even like in the process of making things is really important um because like it helps you get outside of yourself a little bit yeah and um yeah so for me like I have a few friends that like even when they move away it's like I'll call or like I'll text all the time like Mark's one of those people that we like for me like that's super like important to continue that we've like the idea of community has come up like in the last three podcasts too like just this like artists not like obviously there's there's always gonna be a little competition between people just as the nature of yeah art being in an affair and selling and stuff but like there's also this idea of a shared community no matter what your style is and like trading ideas trading secrets or trading you know just kind of experiences and tips and it's it's that's yeah. a great thing. I mean, I think like the idea of competition is interesting. Like for for because for me it depends on like what you're competing with. You know, like 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 I would say like for me, Mark is like um, the best version of that. Like for me, like when I see like Mark do something amazing, then like I like it makes me like try harder to do something like ama- that I find amazing for myself. Like it just I think that's like the positive version of that. Like it's just like you p- when you get inspired by someone, it pushes you to uh, to to do more and like to be more like to to find yourself more like I think for me like that like like true like I don't know this is like kind of cheesy but for me like this is uh it's fine to be cheesy on the on the radio I used to to always love like you know like Dragon Ball Z that's like my like like my old favorite show and for me that was like that is like the way I always think about competition it's like this kind of like like or even like I used to box and stuff too like this this kind of like it's it's not about it's like about like um like bettering yourself and like finding other people that like you like share in that joy of like bettering yourself together and like mark is someone like that for me like i remember when we were in grad school like we would like um there's like one moment where i think i was using some kind of masking fluid or something and like and i had showed mark i think i don't know maybe mark just saw me using it in the studio i showed it to him or something and then he started using it and then the way he used it is like was way more interesting than the way i was using it and like then once i saw him do it then i like knew how to do that and like we like both became better because of that like where i think for me like i would see stu- maybe students in, in the beginning when school started sometimes people would be a little like closed off or like protective and like of their process I, and their technique yeah, like, and what 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 can it yeah how they're, how they're achieving an effect and i think that always like i mean that's maybe normal or natural but like if you can get beyond that i think then then like you can really grow together and like i think that's just a human challenge always this in life is like how do you get away from like fear or like um like you know your own personal fears of of like with from whatever and then um yeah like embrace like each other and like grow together so when you talk about this kind of idea of almost like a community pull-up what would help influence you to want to better yourself would it be techniques or application of how he's approaching galleries or yeah i mean it always depends it depends what you're working towards at the moment you know like everyone has like holes in like in like what like they're working towards you know like one person might be really like great at one thing and then they need to like you know like maybe technique is like not a problem for someone but then their s- content isn't there because they're like figuring themselves out still or something so i yeah. think it just just depends where you're at in the, in the moment like for me like you know there's certain things i'm really good at and certain things i struggle with and like like i like kind of work very unconsciously <laughs> in, in my work and like mark is so funny like he'll just like look at something i'm doing and like just like kind of like laser point out like exp- like explain it and it will be something that I won't have even realized and then I'll be like it'll be like going to like a therapist or something. <laughs> and I'll just be like oh my god yeah like that is there and then you know that for me like is a strength and a weakness too yeah. but I think that's what's cool with like people like round each other out and like to you know there's certain things that you can can like learn from each other that like to help fill those holes like when yeah you know this is oh god no i was just gonna ask because what on that point what, what are you thinking about then when you're creating uh it depends it really just depends i try like honestly i try not to think too much when i when i make things i think for me like when i am too much in a like a like really like di- like didactic like i'm gonna make something about this it's like really boring and it, it will become only about that and like that's kind of the worst case scenario is like like i think to make interesting work you have to um, kind of go beyond yourself a little bit and like you have to be able to um, to yeah step outside and to like to 
also learn as you're making, you know, like I think that's the, the key, like yeah. where. Is there like a little bit of confidence in mistakes too? Just it, like that, or confidence in experimenting and, and sort of knowing that not everything's going to come out exactly right every time like or just you know just yeah this, this sort of like I'm, I'm feeling like I can just go unconscious and it doesn't necessarily in, hinder me yeah I mean, I mean I look for that for yeah. sure and like for me mistakes are so like the th- like the thing because like the mistakes like I don't even if you think about like I, the, the cliche of like science or something like that like a eureka moment like where someone like that's how you get to new places you know right. like because I think most I- information that's in people's heads is from somewhere you know and like it could be interesting but it's like it's like that accumulation of like everything you know plus like the unknown plus like this thing you didn't think about and then connecting all that is like where you when you can get to something truly new and like for me that's like that's what I found like where because if I'm making from an unconscious state it's like everything that I know is still there and I think the important thing is to trust that because you're still like who you are and like and like I think it's you're able to access that in a different way because I always make stuff and I don't like know that I'm making it and then it's it's not like it's not there like once someone points it out I'll be like like it absolutely like then I can't unsee that like it's as there as anything else right. and like there's so many paintings I've made that like when I made them I just like I feel like dumb sometimes saying it but like I didn't like some like you didn't know like this is like clearly a penis and you didn't <laughs> know that was it's always a penis. It's always a penis. Wait, when was your last Eureka moment? Uh, my last Eureka moment. Uh, I mean, well, actually, the painting, like the paintings are here in the Armory show. Um, oh yeah, we're at the Armory show. We nice. should have mentioned that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us, Armory show. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, continue. <laughs> the paintings are here. Like I, uh, like I actually have straight up mistakes in the one painting that are like clear, like just drips and like little, like literally like what you would call a mistake. And then most of the time, like I would fix those by like, for me, like those kinds of mistakes or like, I'll look at, and then I'll be like, is that helping the painting or just in a, like kind of like a visual, like visual way, even like, is it like, like aesthetically like pleasing or not? And I'll be like, Oh, should I fix that drip? Should I not? And then most, some, I used to just like fix it by like making it go away mm-hmm. and like making like, if it's a blue background, like making it hiding that, like that drip is on there. But with this one painting, I was like, I really love when there's like this chromatic, like, ab- like, uh, like effects where like these two, like two colors, like really vibrate against each other. So I noticed like, I was like, oh, instead of make, hiding that, why don't I just, like, put the, like, opposite color on it? And then, like, so then I'll have even more. Like, I just fixed it with, like, the exact opposite color. So there's these little splotches all over the painting. And you can, like, maybe from far away you don't see them, but if you get close you see them. And it just, it's weird because, like, from far away it makes the color even brighter. It's like a blue, like, one's, like, a blue painting. Like, there's, like, a red, like, figure on it. And then there's, like, gray, um, like, kind of fixed spots on it. Look at our pictures, yeah. Yeah, and, like, when you, like, from far away it makes that, because red and that gray is, like, really crazy together. And then it makes the red even more intense, like, in those moments. And it's just kind of an excuse to, like, put, like, you know, like, a Soreau painting, how there's, like, all those, like, like, these, like, I feel like the frames he does, like, on those are, like, a little trick like that where you can, like, oh, like, oh, now I can put this color, this crazy color next to this one and, like, really pump up everything. So for me, it became, like, my little trick to, like, pump the color up but through this mistake. And I, like, really love that. I don't know. Like, it's one of my favorite parts about that painting where it's, like, oh, yeah, like, I can just, like, throw this paint in these everywhere and like it it can do something special um this idea of you um kind of trying to get out your head when you're painting yeah is this something that you had to actively teach yourself or was it something that came naturally and if so how Mm, yeah i think it's just natural honestly i always call think of myself as dumb and like I don't, I don't, I don't really think I'm dumb, but it's like a, <laughs> but it's it's a, it's like I don't know, like a, a way of being. I think like where, like I, I don't think it's like sometimes people call my work na- like naive, but I don't think it's naive either. It, it's what we were we've saying. Been, earlier. We've been trying to figure yeah, out how we conscious naivete. It's more of like I don't like I sometimes if I read like ph- philosophy or something like it's kind of like. I connect it more with like this kind of like relaxed kind of state of like acceptance or something like where, and like for me like. I think growing up, um, like when I went to undergrad and stuff, I think I like kind of always liked art, but never, I just kind of like found myself doing it. Like it wasn't, um, like I didn't like grow up like learning a lot about it or having a lot of exposure to it, but it was kind of like the only thing I was good at. 
and just like kind of slowly found my way just doing it all, all the time and then when I, I was lucky enough to be able to go to um, under undergrad for school and then even then it was like kind of just this following like the path of like what made sense for me like without having like a clear idea of, of where I was going you know what um, yeah. can I ask sorry what, yeah. what did your art look like at this stage I was stage? just gonna say yeah, yeah perfect I don't think it looked that different honestly like it, like my work in undergrad it looks like I have some paintings that like like maybe you're in the studio that you wouldn't know that much like you, you it doesn't look like that dramatically different but I did, it was maybe before I learned how to use the airbrush so I was like painting like drop shadows by hand so did it ever come from like total figuration or something and then you started to strip it back or was it more the tools and the, and the experimentation with different techniques that you were interested in I mean I think there was like there's like a really crucial kind of pivot moment for me with it that I do remember in, in undergrad where like I kind of always was a little bit of a computer nerd and like I would use Photoshop all the time to draw and to like make websites and do like weird weird stuff like for me that's like my kind of like natural like for me like that's painting too like that's like a natural way to like paint and um, that's I had always really done that and then um, there was like a moment where I kind of allowed myself to like and this was like early 2000s like I know that sounds weird but like at that time nobody like like when undergrad no one was using like a computer to really I, I was gonna say work. like your work looks so original to me that I wonder like what professors and stuff were like what is this what is this kid doing like yeah. it, it felt like you probably like, I don't know if you had to explain yourself of what you're doing or or they were like okay this is something like we're gonna let him go in this angle because like this is something that's different <laughs> I feel like people always let me do my thing and they like don't really <laughs> They're just like kind of like oh that's that's fine. <laughs> look at, but him, look I, at him go. Look at him go in the corner. Yeah, over there. I, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, but they've no, always it's, just it's been like kind of like, like kind of. I people always give me good like I don't know good feedback and thoughts, but I've never had any like yeah I don't know like kind of just it's been pretty like just following a path. But I did I have like a one I have one amazing teacher that I really was lucky enough to have like his name is like Stan Stan Whitney. Um, and I, I have this like a really strong memory of him like he was the first person that I think like I did my own thing but I didn't see it as something different like we're looking back now I, re I recognize that it was yeah. pretty different at that time and like if like I don't think I think it was like uh, like this um, hard to like maybe people didn't see what was different about it at the time and that's why I didn't either it was just like doing my thing but I remember my like like sh my thesis show for undergrad so I had walked through the show with Stan and like Stan had said something like oh this is like a new movement and like I was like what like I'm just making these paintings like and I guess really struck because like Stan's someone that I have so much respect for like and honestly at the time like I I was just like taken aback like that he would say that um and now I'm like wow that's cool like Stan's like like so like he's just very aware like even at that time he could see like where like I didn't really see what I was doing like he could see that as like something different and like that he could recognize that at that time I was like now I like look back and that's super special for me um and maybe because we grew up in the digital age it didn't feel as groundbreaking to you because it just felt like a natural extension of the tools that you were yeah. being given whereas maybe an older generation didn't have those tools as much and so it, to you, it seemed like, no, this is natural for me. To that, then I was like, well, this is a whole yeah. new thing that's happening. It's true, yeah. And I think, I do think for me, I'm like a, like a certain generation that is like right on that edge. Yeah. Like, because I, I think like we all are actually. Still, yeah. you're st how, how old are you? I'm like 36. So yeah, 38. I'm like, he yeah. looks very young. He does. <laughs> Thanks. He doesn't, yeah, boxing. he doesn't have the grades. Uh, <laughs> boxing. We, we are, yeah, we look a little we're, bit more we're, gri we're grizzled. <laughs> I'm the youngest, but I still kind of uh, look the oldest. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, people always think I'm younger than I am, but I, yeah, like I feel like it's, that is part of the work though, is like I've gone through that phase. Like when, because when I was like growing up, like most of my friends didn't really have computers. Like yeah. I, I was lucky enough to have one and like that like so I went through this transition of like of um like using that and like exploring it but then like it wasn't in the world in the way it is now and then do you think there was more of a kind of DIY element around that using computers in that time because I, th I feel like you know, during that early period of where blogs started to come come through and anything from fan sites to whatever it might be there was you know 
the kind of the mold hadn't really been set the way that it is, and now everything just gets kind of generically filtered through oh, one of the yeah. gatekeepers, whether it's Instagram yeah, or, yeah, or Facebook. Of yeah, so there was there yeah. was there a, <laughs> yeah what did was there kind of like a freedom to to do what you wanted, and what tools were you using? Yes, all that I 100% agree with. It's really sad. It's like it's weird because like I felt like that looking back now, it felt like a really optimistic time, and like for me, I used to. I mean, I used to like be really. There's like a moment with like net art that I was like really into, yeah. And like like um, and like I never I was really optimistic about that stuff, and it's really kind of dead now. And you see, like I'm like when you mentioned gatekeepers, I think that that is like, exa- like you just I think that's just the way like power works is like you have short brief moments of interruptions of that, and then people learn people in power learn how to take that back, and then you have to like work towards like breaking that again. But we're in a cycle where you know the like facebook owns everything so um you, uh, so that's different but do you think now there's a, there's a chance for us to rupture that again i don't know using I, these tools i wish i knew like yeah. I, i'm like it's like a real bummer i think like where um i think that's this human nature it's just the cycle like of course like that'll happen somehow i, I wish i i don't know like i can't really go back in time but like um you can't no, you can't. Oh, can't. we've got we, we, we've got a guy with a truck. <laughs> he we, takes us back in time. I, I, if we take this yeah. cruise ship over here, we but might I, go back into a weird time called I don't the know. plague. <laughs> well, it's funny though, because even when you said that, and when even if we could go back in time, maybe I wouldn't want to either. Like, but how do you find like a better future? I think is always the the goal, because like to recognize those problems is like the 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 path to get to make it better. Because mm-hmm. like where like say. Yeah, like even like with the internet now, like where even it's so weird, like even the way I use Instagram has changed. Like it feels very strange. Like when I started using Instagram, it was like felt very like I was like at first, like just interacting with people I knew, like like nobody really followed me to like that grew to like people that maybe were like more fans. Mm -hmm. And that was really nice in a different way. But now like I'm really feel weird about posting because it feels like you're it's like this kind of like performance, mm-hmm. I think this weird kind of like outward performance that's like not just people you know, but like this kind of, um, it's str- like strange and it doesn't, it maybe benefits like these like, uh, uh, these companies more than the individual. And that's something that I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to navigate that because yeah. I have certain things I love still about like sharing things with people and having that d- direct contact. And like, I, I, I really don't know like this, the, path for that i'm like so trying do, to figure do it out do you think that hinders your creativity no i don't think so i mean i definitely i don't think it hinders anything but um it because i think it's like a choice it's like it's just like when you like for me like i try to like just keep things flowing like where it's just like that's like one outlet for expression and like if it stops feeling good then you can find another path you know like i used to just make weird net art kind of stuff all the time like animations and like i find it weird that i don't share things on there more like these weird little yeah stra- like what i used to like make websites and strange things that like were really fun to share and like little animations so you i know, don't know it, i was thinking about that generation of like uh is it cory archangel that used to do kind of yeah. like these like specific websites and stuff and digital art and I, it, it's kind of lost now like i don't see it as much as i used to maybe i'm just not fine i'm not searching for it anymore but yeah it was well, a good time when that was happening totally it was a good time yeah <laughs> I, I, I mean someone like petra court right actually yeah. she has a show up now at, at team and like i think she's someone who like is really like really interesting in like her um like YouTube videos from like the early 2000s are like yeah. really important and you see them now and they like feel really Im- like special and important like where I think she was like even like the work was for sale based on views I, I believe like mm-hmm. um, which awesome. you, you see now like that's so interesting even like as a uh, how things are valued based on like how, how popular they are now which is a really weird thing that I think is like strange just in general for, for humans to deal with but um, but yeah I think I mean there's a lot of I think there was a lot of artists that made net art that have transitioned to diff- like different ways to to create their work in the world, but like there are people still do make work online. But I think it becomes more how do you access that? Like where like I think now it's like kind of it used to be a more flat kind of thing. Like you'd have to look look for work, and it was like you're on the web, and then you'd like look for websites, and like you'd have certain ways to get a, get that. And now everything's kind of like funneled to you directly. Yeah, like, and, through they, like, and, and, and put through the Instagram social media uh, like filter as opposed to maybe a website filter, I feel like too. Yeah, and I think that is, I think 
in a way like it's, in some ways it's good in some ways it's bad like it really i think like i feel like i find things that way but also it limits that too because like because it's not like it's not like neutral and like how you're getting that information it's like there's like i don't there's this one book by this guy named jaron lanier that i read recently that's really great it's called like you should delete your social media account or something like that like in it and it's a he kind of explains how those things work and like the background out the way that the algorithms are stacked. yeah and once you think about it that way it's like you realize like okay like this is this is not like a neutral situation like where I, I might not see one of my friends things because of some decision someone else is making because you didn't like a couple of their last posts so suddenly it's like oh well, it's more insidious than that oh, is it, it does it go probably. darker I would think so, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah like it's just oh, more like... I like that. Yeah, yeah like I like that. I, I mean, I, I don't like it, but... Uh, I'm like, no, 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 no. You're like, no, it's darker. <laughs> it well, is much darker. Well, I mean, the way... I mean, this is just more his, like, take on it, but, like, it's more like... It's just... He he calls people, like... Uh, he calls, like, these advertisers, like, um, like behavior uh, manipulators. Or, yeah. Like, yeah. And, like, it doesn't even have to be, like, purposely, like, bad. It's just, like by nature it's like it's like testing things like yeah. oh what if we serve this person this what if we serve mm -hmm. someone this and then it um it like all, all of a sudden it kind of directs someone's behavior like but it's just te like it's just te it's not like necessarily because like they think you'll like something more right. it's like like okay. oh what if we like maybe that's one category yeah yeah but it goes really deep into <laughs> the heart of how like deciding yeah. what you're going to you know an action you're going to take or a product you're going to buy or yeah this is about adverti advertising i think yeah, and yeah. like obviously advertising is really effective because like it's work so yeah that dry can if that's like driving your behavior it's it's like strange you know right and then you know it's like also too like for juxtapose we built our audience on not having to play the game of instagram's algorithms and now that we have 1.1 million followers we're kind of like why why don't we reach everybody that we that follows us oh because we're not playing because you've the pepsi you've game or whatever yeah, yeah exactly Pe like, no one pepsi's not advertising with us so whatever yeah it's you fine. just gave them a free a uh, free promo thank you pepsi. i just know um <laughs> yeah. what you were talking about ruptures and um kind of these moments where uh we can kind of where like things are a little bit more like experimental and fun and, and there's not like a huge kind of you show at the gallery at Jeffrey Deitch. It's been really, really good at constantly sort of um, he's found ways to rupture the fine art world by showing artists that are not necessarily always part of the canon. Yeah. And like from, you know, he was we were Doug and I were talking about this earlier. He was one of the first people to really push like street art, like in a certain way. Um, yeah. He's pushed uh, now. He's been pushing some Japanese art, and just a lot of really interesting shows. Been pushing you, like how is it working with that gallery and kind of in the lineage of like the people he's worked with before? I mean, for me, this, yeah, it's just it's great. Like, I mean, even just working with him, it's been really, um, you know, he has such a hit. Like for me, like Keith Haring is like one of my like yeah. favorite artists and like um, like Jeffrey has firsthand like perfect relationships example of with rupture. Just like when he was first starting, just like the, the freedom just to do what he was doing. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it's like really special to like connect, like, I mean, f to connect with all kinds of, like anyone who has that kind of history and background, um, I'm always kind of looking towards to like, just, it's just interesting to hear, hear their opinion or like, for me, it's like special to like, to connect in, in those ways. Like, so for me, like that kind of connection or like, I mean, like Jeffrey's made some comments about like, like Warhol, like in relationship to my works. Like, so for me, that's really special, like to, um, you know, like to, yeah, just to have, have that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's just been really great. I don't and, know. And your booth in particular looks so much different than all the other booths in Pier 90. Oh, and Doug and I were walking through yesterday. We were just like, we're, that's Austin's booth. You can see it from like, you know, <laughs> from a mile yeah, away. From a mile away. And it, it felt like, oh, you, you, it really looked like you were doing something different. Yeah. I mean, and, and it takes, it does take somebody to, to give, to be like, hey, Austin, we want you to do this full booth yourself in the I middle of this big fair yeah like for me like it's more like i think sometimes like our first can be difficult and like how how to figure out that like where jeffrey asked me to do like a solo booth and then it became like like for me just like how like how do i do like something f like interesting like within that so like, just because like the whole booth then it gives me a little bit of freedom to to like yeah. kind of to do that in a i mean in this booth it's pretty simple like there's not a whole, a whole lot of like crazy stuff going on but those flowers are crazy what are you talking about <laughs> yeah but they're just like a sculpture really like they're it's so yeah you're right <laughs> how, do you do um, you approach this differently then to how you would approach a, a show in a gallery um 
No, like, I mean, this particular booth isn't too different, like, from a show. Like, I think always, um, like, how I make work is, like, I'll just kind of make things for a while, and then if they're, then, like, whatever the context is that it will be seen in, then I'll try to, like, kind of think about that and, like, connect the dots, maybe. Like, I don't try to, like, start off with, like, I'm going to make this for this, but it'd be, like, oh, I was, like, making these paintings, and, like, I've been, actually, I was doing, like, a project with, like, paste prints, and, like, been making, like, um, prints with them. And like some of the paintings for that are here, like started off as like sketches for these prints, and like that is kind of like this different process. It's like really flat. Um, so some of these works, like kind of, you can see that relationships. Like for a while, I was like exploring like like these really like um, like uh, 3D objects and like like more like rounded forms. And I think like for me, like because of this new pro project, it kind of led into to this, and then. It's like, oh, what do I make these as paintings? And like, and then like, there's the this. There, I've been doing like VR stuff lately too. So like, the sculptures, the um, flower ones are, like, there's a painting of that too. So for me, it's sort like it's it's like just this like natural progression of like, the, what form does this make sense in? Like, mm -hmm. should this be a sculpture? Should this be a painting? Because I'll make something in VR that's like a sketch, and then I can see it in the round, and then I'm like, oh, should this be a painting? Should this be a sculpture? Because it can be both, you know. Um, so for me, like, this was the first time I was like, oh, well, maybe let's just, this is a kind of just a fun way to explain, like, oh, I'll make the sculpture and I'll make the painting, put them together and, like, see what that's like. Yeah. Like, so for me, this booth is kind of like a nice, like, exploration of a few, a few ideas. I mean, a show usually is a pretty, like, I'll, I'll have, like, a bunch of work that connects and then have, like, a, like, some kind of, like, overall, like, thing that I see between them. Can you maybe break down that process a little bit? of how you create in general, okay. you know, kind of nuts and bolts. Especially yeah. now that you're talking about VR stuff yeah, too. I'm because like really there's fascinated a, because there's by a that. lot of elements there that, you know, people might not be aware of and things that it'd be quite nice to hear you unpack a little bit. Yeah. So, um, I mean, for me, a lot, most of it starts with drawing really like drawing is like kind of the core. I think like when we're talking about the unconscious, like think drawing is for me a way to tap into that. And what are you drawing? I have no idea, like all kinds of things, like anything, like I don't have any ru like rules in any way, like it's just depends on what's going on, like I'll, like talking about advertising, like I might see an advertisement that really is like, whoa, what is that, and like do a drawing of it, or I'll, you know, go to the museum and see a painting that's crazy, or like I'll be on the subway, and, like draw from, like from life a person, like it really can be anything, like it's, for me it's more like poking at what is interesting in the world, you know, mm -hmm. and that is like endless so I, I don't like to like ha I don't have any rules at all like but it's more like I, li I do kind of like look for things that are unusual like that's where I kind of start from it's like well this is strange like what why is that strange even just like mundane things you know like what like what like things that you don't like maybe take for granted like just about like like you know being a human and like this thing that like maybe let's look at it closer um so that's where it kind of starts. And I just do lots of sketches. And like, I have this little like digital sketchbook now that is really great. Like where, so I can just. So it starts digital? Lately, yeah. It used to, I used to draw with like a pen and paper and like it would start that way. But since I have this new sketchbook that's super light and flat, I bring that with me everywhere. And then I'll just like draw in that and not think so much. And then, and then later I like will revisit that. And then I'll like start to like be like oh like things will just like pop out at me and then i'll be like well oh like i won't even remember why i drew it but then it kind of has a new life after that because you can look at it from a fresh perspective yeah and then i'll then i'll explore it again so like for me it's like all these like trans um like trans uh, like uh transcendental no like transformation or, <laughs> no, wait, no trans translation just so. a trans word <laughs> <laughs> yeah no tra Not like that one. <laughs> like tr yeah just like translations like where it'll be like drawing <laughs> it's gonna be edited out. <laughs> All right, well, Sorry, well, it's okay, I, it's I, threw, I threw I threw that whole thing out the window there. Were you trying to say transcendental? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I meant translations, but anyway. <laughs> But is it, okay, so it is just like if, uh, translating things, right? It's like all these translations that will go from like like a drawing and then I'll maybe go into, I'll look at that again and then I'll go into VR and I'll be like, oh, maybe I'll like, what, like, what is that? And I'll make that thing in VR. Like I was doing these, I've been like, I was like, um, went to um, like Turkey a couple of years ago for a show and then I had seen all this like beautiful architecture and um, like patterns and like I really fell in love with some some of the things I saw there. And 
I usually like a really figurative painter and like that's the way I kind of see things but um after that going there like I was like oh wow like I wonder if I could make a painting that doesn't have like a figure in it and I started doing these like flower paintings like that's where it kind of started with that and so I just started making these paintings that um then like what was so weird is like they still felt like figures like always like they're always like just like like oh that's still like a figure um and then like so this like this recent body of work is like kind of like then I was like oh like I'll, maybe I'll just make these flowers into real people and like figures so that it's sometimes like a long path like even like for me the work kind of like talks to itself too like where I'm on this like l like long journey with it like where maybe if someone just saw something I made today like they wouldn't have all those connections with it but like for me that's where it kind of comes from like it's for me connected to like art history or like things I'm seeing in the world and like my own work and just kind of like make like connecting all those things and thinking about it and like say like if I'm using VR or something like I start to think about well what is this technology or like why am I what, what can this do or like what's interesting about this or like that's how I started like say even Photoshop or something like I started using the airbrush in a way like which is funny because it's like Photoshop's like translating like real world like or like f like photography like tools into like a digital form and then like for me I would use those as like a drawing tool and then when I would make a painting and then I would try to like draw th that like oh how do I draw like a blurry line or how do I make a drop sh like and these are all like things that are coming from like a real thing but then made into digital and then then I'll translate it again and like for me that back and forth is really interesting and like wh where you can then end up with a new thing like where I think when I started making like digital looking images it was more and it was in a different time where like that felt really strange to see that in the world like in a painting like now it doesn't at all so it's weird how like work can change right, right. as the world changes right. around it but like that kind of uncanny strangeness is what I'm always looking for and like trying to find ways to find that just like how like even you know like I think like when Toy Story came out, it seemed like crazy. Yeah, you know? right. But now it's like it seems what? old or something. Well, what's interesting is that there's there's like this kind of move. There's a, like a bunch of artists, and a lot of them come from Japan, where it's like it's almost like they're trying to do digital perfection with by hand, yeah. but you're kind of doing like counterintuitive. Counter, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The kind of opposite of that. Yeah, like I think th like when we're talking about accidents and mistakes and stuff, I kind of look for, I think the weirdness of that, like that mistakes that happen. Most of the time, when I'm like painting like a mistake I'm like rendering it you know because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like it's funny it's like it's just like a look that is it's it's like appreciating this weird mistake that happens in the digital world that like I couldn't think of you know myself like I couldn't come up with that because it's a weird thing that like a human probably like it's from a it's the touch of a hand but in a digital form essentially yeah or like but like if like a say like a pro like something that's coming from like the way a program's programmed versus like a way a human naturally draws mm -hmm. or something. So yeah, like yeah. for me, like that's like, you know, a way to step outside yourself and to find a new form or a new thing. So for me, like I'm trying to like sometimes touch on those, those things. So it's not like, there's still like, it's, I just think it's funny. Cause like my paintings always like, I think people think can think are like, like really loose or something, but they're pretty tight. Like yeah, they're like okay. painted really like, I'm looking at like, like a digital that, yeah, image so and like tightly We're putting rendering that to bed right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that's like, oh, yeah, they're loose. It's like, no, they're they're really tight. <laughs> you know, actually, something that Mark said yesterday that I thought was really fascinating. Is he said that he what he finds a kinship with your work is that he thinks it's sinister. There's a sinister wow. element to it. Like he, he <laughs> was so saying funny. how like he thought the flower like the flower is like a little sinister. Like they're kind of like that. Like they like, got these happy faces, but like they're kind of like. Yeah. It's not like it's evil, but it's yeah. just like that there's something a little like uh that makes sense. Like, I mean there's there's like <laughs> Is this one of those things where it's like now you're being told it it's like oh yeah. Yeah, they are dark. Well, I think Austin are going to have a phone call after this like what would you say? What yeah, well, I mean I I love talking to Mark. I'll call him <laughs> later for sure. But I mean no, I think any pick apart his work now. <laughs> no, I love Mark's work. I mean Mark's best yeah but i mean for me like that's the real compliment by the way it was no a, like, no a high no, compliment. no yeah like for me that's there's always the that's just the duality of life i think is that there's always the good and the bad together like you can't have one without the other and like for me i'm like pretty optimistic person or try to be i think but i think that the reality is like not everything's perfect and the world is complicated and like for me like it's more i think sometimes my work is like trying to it'll be more like I'll maybe be thinking of something that's not great or dark or something but then trying to look at it like optimistically or like trying to like 
look at it from a different angle or like I'll, I'll like definitely play with that back and forth for sure and like that's always in the work I mean Mark knows me really well so he can he definitely can see that side of things for sure like I think for me like that's the like the core of the worker like just being a human is I don't know trying to find like just try to understand something you know yeah. it's never like if it's just one then it's not real you know I don't know like for me like that's the reality of like being alive is like you, you know you, you know you might have a great day but like a million bad things happen to someone else that day yeah. like so you ha like have to be aware of that or like it's there like whether you're like focused on it or making work about it it's like always present you know you know you're talking about these 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 concepts and where you're coming from and you know i'm just interested when you said you you, you showed in turkey and i was wondering if that a turkish audience differs to how an american audience understands your work because your work is it's new for for everybody so i'm wondering if there's a if there's a you know there's a cultural difference there or something like that yeah i mean honestly i've been lucky enough to be able to travel for shows over the last five or six years and that's been really great i mean it's those are like questions that are hard to answer because like if i have a show like the people who are going to the show probably like the work or like they're there for a certain reason so there it's feels very similar like ev anywhere I've been like people that I've talked to are like um you it's usually it's like not that much different throughout the world but I know like that there yeah I'm sure there's some cultural differences in the way something's seen like but not noticeable for you as a as, I'm, as an artist and I'm, an I'm not in a way that I could like like define I definitely think like I have I'm trying to think of like things that people have like directly told me but like um even in the way that the, well, the press not, writes about it. Yeah, and it's not like, like you're going to cater your work for, like, well, I'm going to cater my work for Turkey now. Like, it's not, like, there's not, like, that process, I assume. No, but, I mean, I think it is, like, the history, I think the history of art is different in different places, so then, like, people have different relationships to it. And, like, for me, like, like art making is about, like, um, this, like, growing, like, like, visual language, you know? And, like, and if you're in a, a different place that has a different, um, like, a different relationship to that then it's you know the conversation's different of course like I mean I think that's the beauty of art is that the viewer brings a lot to it and that their interpretation of it can bring new meaning to it um so f for me I'm just like I just like I'm not I just don't have any like specific remembers I mean like I think when I was in I do remember like when I did a show in Italy I remember somebody telling me that like I think because my work is like pretty I don't know colorful and loose and like different like I think they because there's like this history of like you know like Leonardo yeah, da Vinci yeah, yeah. and like they like I was surprised to hear that they told me that they felt like really like that history was like oppressive to them and that that like was like always in the back like the back of their mind like this like like because of like the the history of like like Italian art like so I don't know like that's something that I always kind of remember like remember how like a his like I don't know, like a, a history of like that work, especially if it's in like a city that you grew up in, like can can affect what you're doing or what you think you should do, or like. And like I've seen that with other artists in different ways. Yeah, I don't know. Like for me, that's been something that because I think I didn't have a ton of like like art background when I was younger. Like I kind of have always just found my own path. But I think that's like maybe this is a challenge to like bridge those things, like your his like the history of like whatever culture plus yourself and like doing your own thing but like being in the conversation you want to be in with that but i don't know is this a challenge for everyone Does, to is your work a reflection of your environment then because you kind of touched on on yeah. that you, there's a, a like a little hint in there i guess it can't not be right like i don't know how it wouldn't be like it's i think everyone probably is in, to some extent you, you know you've moved about a bit yeah well i haven't like i've lived in berlin for like six months maybe like two years ago i mean it's the only time i've ever lived outside of the u.s um i've like traveled luckily like th over the last couple of years but so um, mainly with art yeah like i was t like telling you earlier like i was like, i was <laughs> casually leading into this in a really okay. subtle way but you're like oh i was telling you earlier I was like, oh, <laughs> well <laughs> i my fir the first time i was ever outside the u.s i was like my friend's band was on tour and i was like they're like roadie or something yes. so like i had never really left the u.s and then that was like the f my first experience with that which was great like honestly i think it's so helpful to to be able to experience different cultures like because for me that's like the the most interesting is then you can like see your own culture in a different light With a new lens yeah 100%. yeah like, i think that's more of what i've learned from that is like 
like oh this isn't default or like this doesn't have to be like yeah, this yeah 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 and that's something that is like a privilege that i've had that is really great well, um what what were the bands uh, this is we need to, i need, I, I need <laughs> yeah. to know some details here man i need to know um, some details what were the well, band, what kind of music we talking i don't know i don't what, know and, I'm what, like, and what kind of naughty things did you get up to on tour i'm gonna go tmz <laughs> here honestly it was not like me and my friend my friend was a manager so like we were like the resp had to be the responsible one so we were like making sure we got to every venue like yeah, yeah. he basically he was but i was like he like helping like navigate and stuff it was fun but it was like really chaotic and we had like some like things just like like the card breakdown it was fun but it was like like we all didn't, those things that you think are gonna happen happened yeah but like i like i love music it's like my favorite thing and like i think i had always like fantasized about that lifestyle and then when i like got to experience it like as this like extra person on it it was like oh this is like not the <laughs> easiest this life. isn't the fantasy yeah. i had I'm supposed to be no it was like man. hard yeah. it was like hard because then like even i mean they were kind of like an up-and-coming band so it wasn't like what were they called sorry uh the band was called protocol they like they broke up right after, after the, the tour, tour. yeah <laughs> um but like i'm still <laughs> pretty it, friendly with some, some of the guys Rody issues that they had was it what? was that why they broke up <laughs> uh i don't <laughs> i don't even know honestly like i think it's just it's you that, yeah the lifestyle yeah, yeah, is yeah. really okay. tough yeah yeah but definitely. um but anyway it, it was like it was a great experience but it like it definitely changed my viewpoint on some of those things but it like you know we would just kind of like stay with fans and stuff uh, like sometimes uh, and like tours, yeah well there uh, was a mix like what, sometimes what we would you, stay at a yeah. venue and sometimes we would stay but like what it was year like, is this what, what you what year bracket like, like 2007 at? i think okay. so like i just like learned a lot like it's a good way to learn like to if you stay with people instead of like at a hotel or something you like quickly like you guys have to be part of it yeah it feels more real or something environment. you know i think for a lot of bands it's like you turn up you do the show and then you get in a bus and then it's like yeah oh how was scotland i don't know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that there's a lot of that for sure the green so. room was amazing yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. it. i've noticed this theme the last couple of interviews we've done so i, I kind of want to keep it going because it seems like we're doing the yale trilogy here um is there do you think that there is a place for humor in the fine art institutional art world hmm is your work funny actually is your work hu not funny is it humorous okay i mean, I mean those are yeah. two different questions yeah yeah i mean Sorry, i guess, I guess it's like playful humorous yeah. like yeah, yeah. funny like, i mean this is good I, those are good questions like i i don't know what the difference between hum <laughs> funny and humorous is uh i mean for me like i guess with m all right there's a few questions there so yeah first of all I just think like anyone should just do what they need to do like that like rather regardless of like where like what institution they're in or whatever like it just doesn't matter um but like if like for me like humor is really important part of just being a person and like the way you understand the world like some everyone's is just different with that like where I like to share that like the way I like I guess like you know the way Mark was talking about it like I have a certain type of humor in the work that I think um comes comes across in it like it's it can vary from work to work but I think yeah like I definitely like a like a uh, comic strip versus like a I don't know like a what, like a st like stand-up comedian like there's different yeah, yeah, there's yeah. like a range you know like right. for me the kind of humor is more like the like oh that's strange or like oh that's weird yeah, yeah, and I yeah. think that's what I kind of and most interested in or like the strangeness of, of the world but yeah like I don't know with like institutions I think I know I've had opportunities to teach and stuff I think it's just like a struggle like to in all kinds of ways like there's like probably like I think that's a really challenging thing I think like if someone's a good teacher or has a good school or institution they're like f fostering like the student to like find their way and like to figure out who they are and like that would be like the best case scenario. I think it's probably really challenging in like the current like school systems. Like I think it's just, you know, schools are really expensive and it's like a, can be like difficult in that way. It's, it's hard work probably to find, to find yourself in any context, but then I think that can be challenging. But, um, but yeah, that's the main thing though. It's like, how do you figure out who you are? And like, and then sh if you want, like share that with other people, I think that is always like, for any human like the um you know the best thing about making art is like you like it's like your view on the world and like you maybe get to like um have that conversation with someone else and like ha like how do you figure that out and like if a school can help you get to that like that's great 
maybe not everyone needs that but it's like it's certainly if it's not like if you shouldn't go to a, like a school that's going to prevent that you know i think that's really important to like to look towards like what's going to help you become like you know the best you like that that can be and like not worry about like the the irony too is like i've always feel like the people who like try to like um like maybe fit into like some kind of mold or something like that's like the least interesting usually and like that like those those systems too like don't really um value that either like I think that's the weird thing is like you really it's always the best like it's the most interesting to be yourself it's like it's so cheesy but it's like you know it's like the yourself but it is like it is true I think that's like like what what's like that's what you have to offer anybody like so like like I don't know that's for me what's interesting if I read a book or something or like like I want I, I want to like hear someone's viewpoint you know and I think it's like that's what's special is like people who have that how do you like find that I don't know that was lovely <laughs> that, that was, that really was nice. heartwarming I was, I was thinking <laughs> John Lennon I don't believe in Beatles I just believe in me I don't know it's like, <laughs> so, so, so nice uh, I actually love I was listening you know like the bed in I was like watching that oh, recently so but like there's a the, I was talking to him about the Getty has like this podcast that's like these um, audio of like artists that okay. it's like straight it's like there's one with Yoko Ono and honestly it was like really inspirational and like she, they were talking about Yoko and how like you know, for her even like meeting John, like like that changed. Like she was such a um, like radical artist, and then she became like like linked with this like super the, pop star, the, the biggest pop star. Yeah, and like that's yeah. such a radical. Like I never thought about how radical that is to yeah. have like and like the bed in thing is so like so crazy. Like such a radical thing to do, and to do that in such a large scale, like scale that like it's so cool. Like and, and I think too, like at the time, a, a super abstract conceptual artist and a pop star like it was such nowadays yeah. like music and art are so intertwined all the time that it's like yeah. a little different but at the time it was just yeah a really special thing and like if, you know john lennon was such a rebel rouser for being a pop star too so it was like they were good but you really you do see like some like i feel like in a moment like that like when you watch those like you see like someone really can change the way people think like i really like i watch that the people are asking the questions like seem so it seems so weird like the questions they're asking because the things that are very like now accepted it's like they're so like weirded out by and like yeah. i'm like whoa it's so strange that it's like they really did change the way people th- think so like yeah like ideas can be really contagious i think if they're good or bad yeah. so i don't know brilliant thank you awesome. yeah cool this is fun so great yeah thanks for having <laughs> me <laughs> you know we've we've been attempting uh to do the instagram live tutorials uh, but you know 10 minutes tops you know yesterday actually we had a really great one with case for making where she uh taught people how to make paint which i was actually a longer one and it was really fascinating and what i like about it is that we're working with um people i've loved um this artist chris the potter's fantastic person like just a super wonderful human and what i've been like enjoying it is that i think it's very unexpected stuff from the juxtapose instagram which I've been really happy about. I don't think people expect to go onto the Juxtapose live stream and see somebody showing you how to make paint. Um, but that's what I kind of feel like people should come to us for. Yeah, I, I want more. It, it feels a little bit more like artist to artist conversation. And I, I feel comfortable with that. And I don't want it to be like a discussion that feels gossipy. I want it to be something that's very, very useful. Um, because there is so much like look at me, I'm on Instagram live stuff right now. And I, I just don't want to be that way. And uh, Chris has really helped do a really wonderful program with us. And um, a lot of the you know proceeds for the longer tutorial videos go to charities of the artist's choice, just to kind of keep the creative community kind of looking out for each other. I mean, that's really what this is about, just looking out for each other. Um, and it's that's been really good for me to learn because I, we don't really do that stuff that often. So that's been really fascinating to watch people's habits when they watch things. So you as um, you know, there's two there's two hats that you wear: the the print and the online hat yeah. hats. Um, so what was your initial reaction, or how have you started to evolve in how you're engaging with both these these worlds since this? Yeah, well, I mean, 
it's it's a shame it's a shame that people can't go and buy the magazine anywhere really. I mean, I guess there's certain parts in the world where they're not doing these shelter in places and things are open. It's kind of few and far between. What we've been really lucky with is that it's allowed us to go back a little bit into our archives of stuff that we've we've put into the digital kind of um property over the years and sort of revisit things because I feel like people are slowing down and that's been something I've been really happy about. It's also given us a chance just to do like kind of quiet, nice, no stress interviews with artists and their daily patterns that we're putting on the digital. I just feel like everything we're doing right now is non like you could be rushing through all this stuff and feeling like you need to be like breaking news. And it's like everything we're doing now with the digital space has been more, I think, thoughtful and thinking about like this moment in time, because I'm, I'm a big proponent that everybody should slow down a second and actually absorb this monumental moment that's actually a game-changing moment. And I'm, I'm hoping our content in the digital realm is a little bit like that. Um, also noticing there's a major jump in digital audience uh, during this time. Uh, we're noticing a major boost in all of our, you know, traffic and you know, impressions, and that's kind of, you know, to be expected. But, like, a lot of it's based on good, good stuff. So I think that we decided that we didn't want to be um, breaking news. We just wanted to go back into the things that we're good at is just telling stories. And I think that's – I mean, that almost goes counterintuitive to the, to these days, but, like, we just got to keep doing it. Yeah, and, you know, what's been interesting is I've done a couple interviews with people for the next issue, the next print issue, really with – the imperative of like let's not talk about coronavirus the whole entire time but it comes up but it doesn't really come up in this like very literal thing it, it's it, it's been a lot of like a sort of metaphorical musings on social distancing and being alone and being isolated and it's it's been actually felt more natural than i was than i thought it was going to be i thought that we'd be trying to force our way out of these conversations but they keep coming back and i think um i think that's okay um, cause I was a little worried that the next issue is going to be all coronavirus, you know, just every story just, Oh God, you know, yeah, more, more of this. <laughs> but yeah, but we, you know, we're doing, you know, an edit of your Felipe Pantone podcast and actually just talking about technology and certain things, like it make, has a whole new meaning now. It feels almost like you did the interview after. He's always ahead of the curve. Oh, is that <laughs> the curve that we're trying to flatten? Um, I, I do want to give a, uh, a mini shout out. To Tristan Eaton's Trust the Core uh, street art work that he did um, around like hospitals and places in LA. I thought that was pretty fucking clever. That's the Tristan I love, man. I know. It was really good. That was, I actually, I, cause I made a mental note of uh, marking that down. I'm like, oh, this is some street art that's happening at the moment that's very, very uh, clever and relevant. Um, and I, I, I liked it a lot. There has been a couple of good things. I just, I think the best stuff is going to come in a couple of weeks this idea of the automatic knee-jerk reaction boom out and once that kind of dies down then i think you'll start to see this more thoughtful contemplative response you know the the reshaping of the world yeah and i think that's where it's going to go but yeah tristan's tristan's uh recent work absolutely you know that that's the kind of stuff that i i really do enjoy you know, you know, it's one thing I will say that's really funny. I, I love how all these galleries and fairs and everything who already been doing virtual tours for a really long time are now rebranding it as if it's like something that's like brand new for them. I, I keep kind of going like, you guys do that anyway. I don't know why you've like, turned it into like the coronavirus uh, virtual tour, but it actually the art world was pretty well equipped for something like this to happen because they were already doing virtual tours. And they were already doing so much digital, you know, presence of their shows that it's it's funny how it feels like the art world needs to justify itself again about how they do these things like no no, no we were ahead of the curve on a lot of this stuff do you think us as an audience will start to become more attuned into utilizing these practices moving forward or this technology moving forward i guess we're gonna have to right i mean it was you know it's already this thing where it's like you know you see a wonderful show like um when Ares was doing all of his shows in europe like late last year like i was like desperately wanting to see those shows right obviously couldn't go so i'm relying on photos i'm relying on instagram videos and whatever maybe this is a good time to experiment like how we can take it to the next level not just museum tours but just like how artists really show their bodies of work 
in a way that's illuminating. I think it's the problem is just <laughs> there's so many people doing it. So it's, it makes me feel a little bit like there's just like so much noise in the space right now. Like, do you have 45 minutes to walk through a show with somebody? I hope people do. I think it's going to have to be like TV shows, you know, where it's like someone has a channel. And it's just like constant shows on. But I, I think it's there's this is a really good time for everybody to kind of hone in on what's really, really what works and start to do it. Have you been outside? Actually, that's a good question. When, were you, when was the last time you were outside? Oh, I took a I took a little walk yesterday. Are you going out every day? You know, I live in like a little small town outside of San Francisco, so like I can take a walk like along the water for like a quarter mile and come back, and it's very like I, that's it. That's all I'm really doing. Are you going out at all? Yeah, I'm going out once a day. I I try to I'm I'm trying not to get I'm trying not to get fat on this thing. I think it would be so so com comfortably easy to just sit and just be like, do you know what? I got three months. I'm going to let her rip. I'm getting some titties. <laughs> there you go. I hope that interview has helped shine a light on the process behind Austin's work. Once again, I'd just like to say thank you to the Armory Show in New York for hosting us. We hope that everything will be back up and running this time next year so we can return once again for another range of guests. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to those interviews as much as we enjoyed putting them together. Once again, I'd just like to say thank you guys for hosting us. Thank you to Austin, to Essary, to Mark. And of course, thank you to Anna for sneaking into the Spotify studios with us. We'll be back with you guys real soon. Till then, take care, look out for each other, stay safe, peace.